we're going to evaluate some simple uh, trig inverse functions here, some easy ones anyway, ones that can be done without a calculator. And here I've got the uh, cosine inverse of the uh, square root of 3 over 2. And a nice way to think of it, or a convenient way to think of it, is say, well, this is an angle. So give it a, call it an angle, call it theta. You know, we're used to calling angles theta. So this is theta. And what do we know about theta? Well, if the argument is positive, then theta is in the first quadrant. And that's true for every one of these that you go to evaluate, whether it's cosine inverse, sine inverse, cosecant inverse, whatever. If it's po the argument is positive, then theta has to be uh, greater than or equal to 0 or less than or equal to pi over 2. Okay, So that's the first thing. What else do we know about theta? Well, that the cosine of theta equals root 3 over 2. And we know that the angle that that's true uh, that, that makes that true, the cosine of theta equals the square root of 3 over 2. It's a common angle, and it is uh, 60 degrees, right? Uh, 30. 30. Thank you. I'm the worst of my students. 30 degrees. Or I could just call it uh, theta uh, equals the square, uh, pi over, well, it's been a long day, square root of pi over 6. There we go. So we found it, pi over 6. That wasn't too hard, right? So what did we do? The first thing we did is we said it's an angle. That's what an inverse function is. We'll call it theta. If the argument is positive inside the inverse function, then it's automatically an angle in the first quadrant. And we also know that cosine of theta will equal the argument. Let's go over here and take a look at the sine inverse of negative root 2 over 2. This is a little more complicated, and it's useful to know all the graphs of these trig inverse functions. For one thing, just as kind of an aside, here I've drawn the graph of the um, sine inverse. And from the graph, you can get three points right off the bat. The sine uh, inverse of negative 1 is clearly negative pi over 2. The sine inverse of 0 is clearly 0. And the sine inverse of uh, 1 is clearly pi over 2. You go up like this and over, and you get pi over 2. But we're interested, actually, in the sine inverse of the square root of 2 over 2. And so again, you think of this as being theta. So I'm going to call it theta. Now, if it were a positive argument, I could say, well, this is theta is in the first quadrant, but it's not positive. So I look at the graph, and I take a negative uh, number, like the square root of 2 over 2, or somewhere out there. I go down like this. I go over like this. And I see that my theta is between negative pi over 2 and 0. So I put, let's see where I can put this here. Maybe I can kind of erase this. Hold on. Get this out of the way. So my theta is greater than or equal to uh, uh, negative pi over 2 and a less than or equal to 0. It's trapped between here and here. And I'm asking, so then the next thing I ask myself is the sine of what angle uh, that is between negative pi over 2 and 0 gives you negative root 2 over 2. Well, the angle would be, the reference angle would be a 45 degrees. Sine of 45 degrees gives you root 2 over 2. But this is an angle between negative pi over 2 and 0. And we, it's negative. So what, what it would have to be is negative pi over 2. Excuse me, negative pi over 4. Am I be saying pi over 4? I hope I understand. No, only that time. Pi over 4. OK. Yeah, the sine of negative pi over 4 will give you negative root 2 over 2. And it is between negative pi over 2 and 0. I'm kind of sl sloshing through this. But get the idea. Okay, let's go over to here. Here we're going to look at the cosine inverse of negative one half. And so I, it's helpful again to have a graph to know, understand how to graph these functions. I look at this graph and the fun, and nice thing about the graph is just as an aside is that the cosine inverse of negative one is obviously pi. The cosine inverse of zero is uh, pi over two. And the cosine inverse of one is zero. So you get three points for free if you know how to graph the uh, cosine inverse. And it will also help us graph the cosine inverse of negative 1 half. So this is not a positive argument in here. So I call this theta. It's angle. So it's called theta. And what do we know about theta? Well, let's see. It's trapped in some quadrant or other, right? Well, let's see what it is. If I put up like a negative 1 half here, again, I just go up here and I see where my y value is. Well, here it is. It's trapped between pi over 2 and pi. So here it is, trapped in there. So we're looking for an angle whose cosine 
is negative one half. Well, in terms of common angles, we know that that is pi over three. I got it right that time, it's pi over three. But it's not pi over three, it's in the next quadrant, it's between pi over, so it has to be two pi over three. So theta equals, you can get it up here, two pi over three. Another important thing to remember is these functions only deliver one answer. And they, and, and they, don't, and they deliver, in this particular case, you, it can only deliver a, a, an answer in, from zero to pi and in no other quadrants. So you have to be very, very careful. These are the, uh, these are the evaluations your calculator will give you.